As you can see in the diagram, each sequence is divided into two subsequences. The first part is called the user interface sequence. The second part is called the execute sequence. Now the installation and administration installations both have user interface and execute sequences. However, the advertisement installation only has an execute sequence. Now let's go back to the Install Shield IDE. This is the Custom Actions and Sequences view. It's under the Behavior and Logic section. And you can see that we have the three installation types here. We have Installation, Advertisement, and Administration. Each installation type has a user interface and execute sequence. Even the Advertisement installation has a user interface node, however it's empty. If we expand the user interface sequence for the installation installation, we see all the actions that are performed during that sequence. We can expand the execute sequence too and see all the actions that are performed there. Remember here in the execute sequence, um, this is where the changes are made to the target system, but no user interface elements are shown. No dialogues are shown during the execute sequence. Now when you do a silent installation, the Windows installer skips the user interface sequence. When you do a test installation by going up here and clicking on the test user interface button, uh, the Windows installer skips the execute sequence. So here you just see if the string of user interface elements, the sequence is correct, you can go backward and forward in the dialogues and see that everything works the way it's supposed to. And uh, in here we have, we have a mixture of standard actions and custom actions. This is a standard action. See, it has like one of these, uh, I forgot what they call these on movie sets, but anyway, this is a custom action. It has this little orange box graphic out to the side. So standard actions, custom actions. And you can see when I click on a standard action um, here that each action has three properties. The sequence number determines when the action will be executed in the sequence. So here we have the sequence number is 430, this is 450, 4500, 600, you know, and so forth. Now, the first three actions in the sequence have negative numbers, which means that they will be executed at the end of the installation. Actually, I should say that one of them will be executed depending on the return value of the installation. If you have a successful installation, this one will be displayed. If you stop the installation, this will be displayed. And if you have an error, you'll get this one. Now, ex actions are executed in numerical ascending order until execute action is encountered in the sequence down here. Now the execute action will start the next phase of the installation, which is the execute sequence. You should know that the execute action will generally run with system privileges and the execute action property will be set to either install, admin, or advertise according to the type of installation being performed. Also, the actions in the execute sequence are executed in ascending order of their sequence numbers until the install initialize action is encountered. Install finalize, install initialize. We'll see this in a minute. I forgot where it is. Here it is, install initialize right here. Now the install initialize action signals the beginning of the actions that change the target system 
and is also the beginning of the script creation process. You see a, a binary MSI installation script is created that contains the operations that change the system. However, it cannot be read like a traditional text-based script, such as those written in the install script language. So there are several kinds of actions that can occur after install initialize. The immediate action can be executed Slides. immediately and does not modify the target system because there would be no rollback operations that can undo the changes. A deferred action will not be executed immediately when encountered, but is deferred to the installation script. Typical deferred actions install files, modify the registry, etc. A rollback action is a special type of deferred action. When the Windows installer generates its script, it simultaneously generates a rollback script. The rollback script contains operations to be performed when the installation is rolled back. With custom actions, it is the developer's responsibility to provide a method to rollback system changes since Windows installer would know nothing about the custom action. A commit action is a type of deferred action which is a complement to a rollback action. Commit actions are only executed at the end of a successful installation. They are placed in the installation script, but not executed until the end, which is after the install finalize action. And the install finalize action stops the script creation process and executes the installation script. Here's some things to remember. Deferred rollback and commit actions cannot be placed outside the boundary of the install initialize and install finalize actions. This is because the installation script is only in play between those two actions. There are various steps in the execute sequence. Step one is to execute immediate actions immediately. Put deferred actions into the script. Step two, execute deferred actions but not including commit and rollback actions. Copy rollback actions to the rollback script. Step three, in the case of a successful installation, execute all commit actions. In the case of a failed installation, execute the rollback script. Here are the final tasks. After the execute sequence is finished, controllers return back to the user interface sequence. All actions that occur after execute action in the user interface sequence will then be performed. Let's go over this again, but this time hopefully it will have a smoother flow to it. In the user interface sequence of the installation sequence, actions are executed that interrogate the target system. No changes are made to the target system. Actions are executed until execute action is encountered. In the execute sequence of the installation sequence, install initialize is executed and the script creation process is begun. Actions are executed that make changes to the target system. And install finalize is executed and the script process is ended. Control is then returned to the user interface sequence. Back in the user interface sequence of the installation sequence, all actions that occur after execute action are executed. Setup complete success is executed if the installation was successful. Setup interrupted is executed if the installation was interrupted. And setup complete error is executed if the installation generated an error. Let's move on to discuss how the user interface sequence can be changed in a basic MSI installation. 